Hello, Miguel from Grumo here, and I'm going to show you how to create a tennis class booking mobile app just starting with an ugly Google Sheet in a few minutes. How awesome is that? So in this app, you can look at different coaches, you can look at different courts, and you can click a booking button to basically book that coach. As you can see, we have really, really famous coaches in our tennis academy. Woohoo! All right. So the way we can start doing this with Glide is simply with a spreadsheet. And our spreadsheet has only two tables, coaches and courts. Now with just this, in a few minutes, we can have a beautiful mobile app for our students to book classes and become professional, amazing tennis players or something like that. So for the app to work, we need to have a top row with basically these columns. In this case, it's just name, email, bio, a photo, and a booking link that is pointing to our Calendly account, okay? And then we have another optional table which just has locations. So people can either choose by coach or by location or different courts in, in the city where you are promoting your tennis services. And with this, and Glide, you can create a mobile app in a few minutes. Let me show you how. Let's go to Glide and then just click the new project button. Boom. And give it a name. Tennis Classes. Then decide whether it's going to be a Glide page or a Glide app. Glide apps are for mobile apps and Glide pages are more like traditional web pages. They still work on mobile, but they're not as optimized to work as in a mobile device as a Glide app. So I'm going to select Glide app for now and then click continue. Now you have to select your source. It can be either Glide tables, Google Sheets, Excel, Airtable, and you can even import CSV or other files in order to use as a data source. In this case, we have a very, very simple Google Sheet. So we're going to select Google Sheets, click continue. And because we are already connected to our Google Drive, we can see that the top spreadsheet is this one, is the one with only two tables. And we click select, and this is going to create an app already. How fast was that? Like literally just select the Google Sheet and you have a mobile app. This mobile app is fully working already. You can preview it as in a, an, an iPhone or an Android or a, as a, a, ta a, a tablet. Uh, so right now we're going to be working in, on the iPhone screen preview. And literally, you can, this is already working. <laughs> Look at that. It's already recognized that we have two tables, coaches and courts, and it's created two tabs accordingly, coaches and courts. And we can see here all the details for the coaches and the different courts. But Glide is just guessing how we want this app to look. And the great thing is that now we can modify the look of this app very, very easily by clicking any of the components. So on the right-hand side, you can change how everything looks. So for example, for the coaches, maybe you want to make the list a little bit bigger and we want to have, instead of uh, just a list, cards. And that already looks a lot better. And now maybe you want to change you know, how things look, get rid of the uh, title, and maybe instead of having three lines of description, change that to two lines. And now let's just click on any of the detail pages. And under the title, I'm just going to get rid of the bio here. And I'm going to put the bio as a text component. Just click the plus button and select one of the components. In this case, the text component. I'm going to drag it and drop it under the image. And we can have here an email or a booking link. But I want the booking link to be a button. So all I have to do is add a new component, type button, and then click on the button. It adds it to the bottom of the screen. I can change the title to book now and I'm going to change this action to link and it's going to open a link inside a web view and uh, when I click on it right now you can see how it's opening my booking page right here and I could already book myself a class. Of course, you need a Calendly account to do this. So you can open a free Calendly account at Calendly.com and then you can create different events. And if you want multiple people, in this case, multiple coaches to use the same account, you will have to go under your billing area and add seats, add as many seats as coaches as you have. So everybody could have their own Calendly link. And then when people are booking them, they, uh, it would open their corresponding booking page. All right. 
So now I'm just going to get rid of this and I have the email. I don't know if I need the email for people to have, just need the book button. And this is working for all the coaches already. You can see it. Once you change the detail page of one user here, it actually changes it for all the other users. So you could book Federer if you want it and all these other coaches. Now for the courts, we can see we have a list, but the beautiful thing about Glide is it allows you to easily create a map view just using addresses. So you can see that all of these courts already have an address entered. So if I go to the list and I change the type of view or style to a map, and if I select as the content for the address, the actual address, well, guess what? It already created a map with all the locations of all our courts, and you have two views. By default, is the map view, but if you click on this icon, you can have a list view of all the courts as well. Now, basically, we've, we're done. Now you can uh, hit publish, uh, click the publish up button, and give it a URL. So right now it generates an URL automatically, but this could be something book tennis classes. And I could copy and paste this and distribute this for my students to start booking classes right away. I mean, how long does this take? A, a few minutes and basically you have a fully working booking app. Now, if you want to further customize it, you can simply click on the settings button and you can change the name and the icon of your app. Uh, let's just find a tennis ball here. You can also change the colors if you want to, the author, the description, tennis booking app or tennis class booking app, the appearance, the privacy. By default, it's uh, only Grumo team members only, but if you want to make it public, so anybody can basically, by going to the URL of the app, can start booking classes, they can just change this to public sign-in, and then you can also allow uh, people to sign in with a Google account if you want to, but specifically if you want administrators to be able to administrate the app. Now, there's one thing that you probably want to change is by, by, by default, Anybody that can access the app can either add new content or remove content. So in this case, maybe we just want the administrators to be able to fiddle with the content of the app, right? In order to be able to assign user roles, you need to first go to the user profile and select a sheet source for your user profile, which is going to be, in this case, coaches. For the user profiles to work, is you need at least three columns, which are uh, name, email, and photo. Once you have those three columns, which we have in our sheet, then you can enable your Glide app to have user profiles. You can see it's recognized that. It already has grabbed my picture and email for my user profile. And once you do that, anybody that is inside the user's table, or in this case, the coach's table, appears as well. And we can pretend that we're logging in as any of those users. In this case, there's only one administrator. It's going to be me. And the reason why I know I'm the administrator is because there's actually a copy of the Google Sheet that has been created automatically inside the Glide data editor. You can see here the two tables that are in our Google Sheet, coaches and courts have been replicated here and are automatically synchronized with our Google Sheet. And you can always force synchronization by clicking this arrow here or this arrow here. And we can add new rows from here, etc. Now, in this case, there's only going to be one administrator, which is going to be me. So I'm gonna create a new column called role. And I'm gonna say, whoever has the admin role is going to be able to add new content and edit content. So now that we've created that role, we can add a condition saying that only uh, users which role is admin can edit the app. Now you can see as I'm logged in as the administrator mix, I can see the plus button, but if I pretend to be logged in as anybody else, let's say Feather, he cannot see the button. It's an easy way to create an admin user. The same thing for editing content, by default it's always enabled. So if we want to make only the administrators to be able to edit content, we click on the edit form here, and then I, we add a condition and we're gonna say the same thing. Only users whose role is admin can edit content and the same for courts. We have the plus button here, so anybody can add new content. So we're going to also enable it only for admins. And also when we click on any court, if we want to edit it, then we would do the same thing. Let me just uh, edit form, add a condition, and 
only users whose role is admin can edit courts as well. Okay, so one thing you may want to do is assign different courts to different users, and for that we're going to use uh, relations. We're going to link users or coaches to whichever courts that they teach on, right? So how do you do that? How do you display here, for example, that I'm teaching on uh, one of these courts, right? On the Slocan courts, by the way. These are real courts here in the Lower Mainland in Vancouver. And I actually go to Slocan courts a lot because I'm learning how to play tennis. And I'm, and I'm not very good yet, but one day, one day with more classes. Oh, maybe I should use my own app to start taking classes. Imagine I could take classes from Djokovic for a million dollars per second. Okay, so the way we're going to be linking courts to coaches is by creating a relation between courts and coaches. And how do we do that? Well, first we need to go to our database here and add a new column, which is going to be court ID. Okay, court ID. And here's where we're gonna put the ID of the court that each of the coaches is teaching at. And for that, we have to create an ID column so we can do the linking. So we, let's click the plus button and add a row ID. And this generates automatically a unique ID for each of the items here. In this case, each of the courts. So now I can, let's say, copy this link for Slocan courts. This is where I teach and add it to this uh, user, which is me. And I mean, I'm just gonna add a few more just so all coaches have a, a court, right? Okay, and add a couple more here. And now, uh, this is just the first step is to add the court ID column to each user, but now we have to link it to the courts table. So we're gonna call this courts rel because it's going to be a relation type of column and we're going to match the newly created court ID with the row ID column inside the courts table. And now we have to decide if whether we want to match multiple or not. If each coach can only teach in one court, then you don't need to select match multiple. But if each coach could teach in multiple courts, then you would match multiple because you would want to show all the courts that coach teaches on. In this case, we're gonna say that each coach only teaches on one specific court, all right? And now we could go to our layout and under each coach, we could add a relation component. And by default, it's already grabbing our only relation column, which is the court one that we added. And you can see how it's already picking the data from the court rel relation column. And you can see now I'm teaching on Slocan courts. Uh, but if I were to go to any uh, other coach, you can see how it's made the match also. Now let's say that we want to show which coaches are teaching in which courts. So we would do something very similar, which is go to the courts table. And in this case, we're going to add a relation column, which is going to be coaches rel, and it's going to be a relation column. This is how you connect tables with tables, right? And we're going to match the row ID of this column with the court ID inside the coaches. This is going to be match multiple because there can be multiple coaches teaching in the same court, right? And you can see once I click on here, there's two courts that have multiple coaches, right? And now that we've done this, we've connected courts to coaches, we could also display a list of the coaches inside each court. So let me just enter an inline list here and we can see that uh, automatically it has picked the coaches rel column that we just created and we can see that this court has only one coach but if we were to go to let's say uh, Burnaby Lake courts there is two coaches that play there right and again we can see this as a map so let's say that somebody wants to learn here at Queen Elizabeth course they could click there see that feather is available there and then just click the book button and book Federer for $75 an hour. <laughs> maybe maybe that's too cheap, eh? But obviously you can change that under your uh, settings for your calendar here. So once you create a new event, you can always uh, edit the event. And uh, if you have a pay account, you can collect payments either 
via Stripe or PayPal. In this case, uh, we have Stripe, $75. If it was Feather, it maybe it's more like something like this, amount of dollars. <laughs> Let's leave it at 75. And then you can select, the coach could select which this, uh, he or she is available, right? Let me just cancel this. Uh, yes, and uh, here you would select basically which days of the week you're available uh, for people to book their classes. And there you go. This is a nice, easy way to create a booking application for, in this case, tennis, but it could be any other, any other type of activity. It could be online teaching. It could be coaching. It could be any other type of coaching, basically. There you go. A fully working booking app, in this case, for tennis classes created just out of a Google Sheet on a few minutes. How cool is that? Now, if you want to learn how to create apps like this, more complex than this or similar to this, just go to groomo.com slash go glide to get a 50% discount on my eight hour plus online course on how to create beautiful mobile apps using glide. There you go. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.